Hello everyone and welcome back to Classic Comics. So we're finally getting the Snyder Cut this week. And since Snyder's films are getting renewed attention, I thought I might talk a little bit about them, Man of Steel in particular, and my thoughts on Snyder's version of Superman. So Snyder's take on Superman was pretty divisive. He presented a Superman who was a little more conflicted and uncertain about his role in the world a significant departure from how we were used to seeing him, the classic Christopher Reeve version of Superman. Personally, I had mixed feelings about this portrayal of the character, but I respected what Snyder was trying to do. He was trying to portray a Superman who exists in an environment that is closer to the world we live in, a more, not necessarily realistic, but more grounded version of Superman. I think this was done for a couple of reasons. First, I think this just kind of suits Snyder's sensibilities. Snyder's films have a very visceral feel to them, with an emphasis on graphic violence and highly stylized action. Just look at 300, or Watchmen, and you see the kind of worlds he tends to create for superhero characters. Another reason was a desire on the part of Snyder and Warner Brothers to create a superhero universe that was different from the Disney MCU. The MCU films emphasized bright colors, humor, and family-friendly adventures. Now, this formula resulted in tremendous box office success, and it gave us some fun, entertaining movies, but also led to films that were formulaic and kind of repetitive. So Snyder took a darker, grittier approach to the DC, EU, and Superman in particular. This approach gave us a Superman who is less idealized than the usual portrayal of the character. He's less of a Boy Scout, he's conflicted, he isn't sure what to do with his powers. He feels alienated, no pun intended, from humanity. He's haunted by the death of Jonathan Kent, who he could have saved but didn't. So this version of Superman is less Man of Steel and more Feet of Clay. He's hobbled by doubts and fears about how humanity will react when they discover what he is, and as a result, he kind of backs into being a superhero. Honestly, I wasn't thrilled with this version of the character. Some characters work well with a gritty, dark tone. Batman is the obvious one, along with his related characters like Nightwing and Batgirl. Green Arrow can work that way as well, and The Question can also work that way. Over at Marvel, Daredevil is the obvious one, along with Moon Knight and The Punisher. Obviously, those characters are all basically human. They aren't bulletproof. They don't have super strength, flight, or other flashy powers. The more powerful the characters are, the more difficult it is to go gritty and realistic with them. Again, I respect what Snyder was trying to do with the character, but I think Snyder doesn't really get these characters or what makes them who they are. However, a thought did occur to me while re-watching Man of Steel that made me think maybe I'm judging the film too harshly. In a way, Snyder may have gotten back to the roots of the Superman character in a way he didn't realize. Maybe Snyder's take on Superman actually harkens back to the earliest influences on creators Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster when they were creating the character. Maybe Snyder's version of Superman isn't such a radical departure for the character. But to understand this, we need to look at how the character of Superman was created. In 1933, writer Jerry Siegel and artist Joe Schuster created a short story titled Reign of the Superman. In the story, a scientist invents a formula he believes can boost human intelligence. He bribes a homeless man named Bill Dunn to allow the scientist to test the formula on him. The formula works, and Dunn, who is bald, becomes a super genius almost overnight. With the powers of telepathy and mind control, he is soon bullying the scientist and plotting to gain power on the way to ruling the world. The scientist, realizing that he's created a monster, tries to stop Dunn, and the self-declared Superman kills him. But Dunn kills the scientist before learning the formula for the intelligence-boosting solution, and soon the formula wears off and his intelligence returns to normal. The story ends with Dunn returning to the streets to beg for food once again. This was the first story that Siegel and Schuster created that featured a character called Superman. It's also interesting how the Superman of the story resembles Lex Luthor, another bald genius that Siegel and Schuster created. Siegel and Schuster spent the next few years developing the Superman character and trying to sell him to newspapers as a comic strip. 
During this time, Siegel decided that the character would be more sellable as a hero rather than as a villain. Siegel then changed the character, modifying Superman's powers to make him more sensational. Like Bill Dunn, the second version of Superman is given powers against his will by an unscrupulous scientist, but instead of gaining psychic abilities, he acquires superhuman strength and bulletproof skin. Later, his origin was changed again, becoming a scientist adventurer from the far future, where humanity has naturally evolved superpowers. Just before the Earth explodes, he escapes in a time machine to the modern era, whereupon he begins using his powers to fight crime. Still later, his origin was changed again. In the distant future, where Earth is on the verge of exploding, the last surviving man sends his three-year-old son back in time to the year 1935. The time machine appears on a road where it is discovered by Sam and Molly Kent. They leave the boy in an orphanage, but the staff struggles to control him because he has superhuman strength. The Kents adopt the boy and name him Clark and teach him that he must use his fantastic natural gifts for the benefit of humanity. Is this starting sound familiar yet? The origin story would then be altered once again, making him an alien from the planet Krypton, becoming the Superman we know. A couple of years later, they sold the character to a publisher called DC Comics, and the rest is history. But how did Siegel and Schuster get from the bald genius in Reign of the Superman to the heroic figure in the first issue of Action Comics? Like most creators, they were influenced by other stories they read. Both Siegel and Schuster were fans of pulp science fiction stories, and those stories often featured characters with superhuman abilities like telepathy and superhuman strength. Siegel admitted in an interview that the John Carter stories by Edgar Rice Burroughs influenced him. This isn't surprising. In the Burroughs novels, Carter is an Earthman who is transported to Mars. Because Mars is slightly smaller than Earth, its gravity is weaker than Earth's. This allows Carter to leap great distances and perform great feats of strength on Mars. Siegel then imagined Krypton as a world much larger than Earth. When young Kal-El is sent to Earth, its weaker gravity helps give Superman powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Now, according to his Wikipedia entry, Siegel mentioned in an unpublished memoir called Creation of a Superhero that another big influence on him was his science fiction novel called Gladiator, which was written by Philip Wiley and published in 1930. The story involves a scientist who invents a serum to improve humans by granting them the proportionate strength of an ant. The scientist injects his pregnant wife with the serum, and his son, named Hugo Danner, is born with superhuman strength, speed, and bulletproof skin. Hugo's parents raise their son to be respectful of his incredible powers, and teach him never to fight or otherwise reveal what he can do, lest he become the target of a witch hunt. Hugo grows up being bullied at school because he is unwilling to fight back. In his teen years, he joins the high school football team and becomes a star player, but he quits after he accidentally kills another student. Hugo then quits school and he wanders the world for several years, and taking and then quitting several jobs, trying to find a purpose for his life and a worthy cause for his great powers. He finally joins an archaeological dig in South America and befriends the leader of the expedition. The novel ends with Hugo climbing to the top of a mountain during a thunderstorm and asking God for guidance for a sign of what he's supposed to do, and then he is struck by lightning and killed. I'm focusing on Gladiator in this video because there are some elements to Man of Steel that are clearly similar to the Gladiator novel. Clark is warned by his parents never to reveal what he can do or he may be persecuted for it. He then spends time wandering the world looking for a purpose before finding it when Zod and the Kryptonians arrive. He even goes to a church to seek guidance from God at one point. Now, I don't think that Snyder has ever read Gladiator or John Carter, but he actually tapped into something that recalls the early influences on the Superman character. So what about the Snyder Cut? Will it be good? Well, I hope so. But I do think it's great that the fans are getting what they want and that Snyder is getting a chance to realize his original vision. So are you itching to see the Snyder Cut? Do you like Snyder's version of Superman? Let me know in the comments, and if you found this video informative, please hit the like button. Also, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.